does melt it a lot. It's um, it, it's 35, 40 degrees here a lot of last night. It's starting to recede. Um, so I hold this ladder out here. I'm going to go ahead and hop up and bust this snow off this roof and then we're, we'll look up and see that there's a hatch on the end of the gable yeah. end. We'll, we'll climb up there on the snow and open that hatch up and see what these, see what the damage is to the trusses. We can tell a lot. Don't step over to the middle of the roof until you check. We can tell a lot by looking at it. I'll be fine getting up here and I'll just take the snow off as I go. So stay out from under me though, especially from inside. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going in there. <laughs> What do you think? Good. You catch me if I fall. Watch out, Stella. I'm gonna get up over there rather than here. I think I'm gonna move this up on that snow pile. Like that's safe. Uh -huh. Do you feel like that's safe? Oh yeah. It's so dense. Just too hot. <laughs> Are you gonna come up? <laughs> she sure wants to. job is going to take way longer than anticipated we thought maybe 30 minutes or so and it is turning into several hours of work we had no idea it was quite so frozen and dense up there so that's how we're spending the morning or how gail is spending it i guess
How's it going? It's going good. It is going good. A lot more work than I thought it was going to be. This bottom foot and a half is just packed solid, just hard. So I'm having to hack it off of there with this shovel. I'll be tired before the day even gets started. <laughs> <laughs> good times. So here's the boss, keeping an eye on everything. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> She's Look brave that. now. Look at that. <laughs> I'll hold the ladder for you. Are you gonna go still? She wants me to go first. I think. Ah! I didn't bring my mittens, so. Here you go. Come here, Stella. We're all giving way. She's, she's totally loving this. Ugh. I look at her over there. <laughs> what? It's so falling off, it's slippery. So all I'm doing today, uh, as far as roof shoveling goes, all I'm doing today is shoveling to right here. This is the edge of the of the workshop inside that we're gonna work on. Uh, the rest of this building, I'll have to shovel it here in a week or so. Um, and we're, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll make up our minds what we wanna do with that section of the building, whether we wanna tear it off, uh, tear it down rather, or uh, whether we wanna save it. So we'll get a closer look at it as we get it shoveled off and get into this attic. you do that I can feel the roof bouncing that's actually a good thing uh, when a roof is stretched all the way down when the trusses are deflected the whole way that's when they're at their weakest point so if you can feel bouncing that means there's still some capacity in the top cords oh well that actually, actually I don't know if that's true at all I just <laughs> okay. I just say that to make you feel better. All right, I don't feel better now. I'm getting <laughs> off of it. <laughs> Frenchy. Frenchy. I'm actually okay with that. This is like the hugest. Oh, Stella, you just got snow down my back. This is like the hugest pile. It looks like the Air Force decided to pay me a visit today. I'm getting my own private air show here. These guys are just ripping around over the top of me here and it is really cool. There's five of them and they're just, they're just putting on a show here for me. I think that's enough snow shoveling for today. <laughs> I've uh, removed the snow here off about 25 feet of the roof on both sides and that's the area uh, of the shop inside that we're going to work on today and this gives us a chance to take a look at this stovepipe too uh, this insulated section is metal bestest it looks like it's seven inch um, that's inside diameter and it's uh, it's a, it hardly looks like it's been used i don't know if it's ever been used i went inside and looked up and it's clean and shiny on the inside of the pipe and as you can see the edge of this 
rain cap is completely clean and you know when they've been run a while there uh, they're, this is typically covered with soot and pretty dirty inside the rain cap is completely shiny and new so hey something uh, something old and something new here so Stella, stay here. Stay here with mom. Come here. He's not done yet. I don't know if you can see that. It's about 10 degrees today so far. It actually feels warmer than that though. I going to hate this. You're going to hate this. Oh, yeah. Girls first. You just want me to sink in the snow. <laughs> Cuddle. You're worried. If you sink, I won't be able to get you out. Oh, I you. <laughs> I'm like the canary down the coal mine. There's no coal mine here. <laughs> Come on. Ah. Oh. I love them all. Gil. I'm helping. I'm gonna, you can't help me when I sink to the bottom of the snow. I'm here to help. Huh? Here, I'll put the canary in the coal mine. Here, here, here comes the canary. Right. Go, canary. Yeah, I weigh more than, like, double what she weighs. She's like, no. <laughs> She's like, hell to the no. Go, you're fine. You can stand up. So do you. You don't have to crawl the whole way there. Alright, let's go. Gosh. Don't stand in my same spot. It's too much weight. <laughs> You're doing good. You're doing great. Don't fall through that window. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I'm going to climb back in here and see what we got here. These aren't factory built trusses. Clearly, these are home built trusses. There is not much here supporting this roof, that's for sure. It is very weak. So, let me hop up in. Amazing that it survived this snow load this oh winter. Oh goodness, yeah, it has. Do you have enough light in here? You can see yep. it is. Mm -hmm. So there is a, that there is a splice in these bottom cords at 10 feet this direction and see there's maybe two splices
Well, it's hard to tell for sure, but the, the one cord, that one bottom cord is 10 feet, and then this bottom cord appears to be about 14 feet, and they're spliced. These two are spliced here, and then I see splices on this side, you know, with the 10 and 14 reversed. They're on two foot centers. We've got a two by four top cord that is about 12 foot six, I would say, in length. So it's spanning, yeah, about 12 foot eight. But we have these vertical one by fours, um, these two at, at two locations. So measuring from the outside wall, we are at eight foot seven to the center. These top cords look like sled runners. Let me see that camera and I'll give you a shot of them. I don't know if you can see that. But they probably have close to a three inch dip in them, a bend in the middle of them. So we're gonna have to do something about that. I'll get right on that. All right. Here's your camera. <laughs> Did she jump off? I gave her a you swap from behind. Gave her a shove. I gave her a little help. Did Dad give you some help? Let's go grab a generator and uh, the generator and cord and uh, throw a light in there. It's it's dark. It'll Sounds help. Sounds good. saggy but it's not dangerous you don't need to worry about it falling on you you can uh, shut that door if you want where is this map where is the map they're talking I don't know. Oh, 1955 with minor revisions in 1969 but it's probably mountain not change, change do they no so he has hatched all of this area out with the Sharpie. What is this area that he's hatched out? See, he has the, gul the Gulcana here. I don't know, maybe it's a hunting area or something. Eureka Creek. And then here's the Black Rapids Glacier. Hmm. Gun Creek. You remember when we spent the night under the Gun Creek Bridge? I'll never forget it. <laughs> that was, goodness, 30 years ago? Probably yeah. 30 years ago. We camped out. We camped out under the Gun Creek Bridge. Wow. We were just kids. And we forgot all of our cooking where we didn't have anything to cook on. And we were wanting to make pancakes or something in the morning. I don't remember that. All I remember I was like eight months pregnant. She was about eight <laughs> months pregnant. And we found this old road sign and used this old road sign over our campfire as a, uh, as a skillet to cook our pancakes on. So. I'm sure it was super good for us. <laughs> yeah, it was aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> or else it was our coffee pot, so... Is that, that gives us enough light, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's chilly in here. Are you cold? 
I'm fine for now. Well, we'll get this fire going here very shortly. So, so this is, where's the let's, let's take everything, the big items, into this, this part of the shop that's not shoveled off yet and uh, just kind of out of the way as much as we can. Yeah. yeah. These are empty boxes, which you might need. Yeah, that's true. You better have safety empty boxes. Sep separate them. Sounds good. G cup doesn't sound as good as But it sounds misleading because it doesn't have a T in it. <laughs> yeah, it's a T still a teacup. Even without tea cup. even without T. It's not the shape of a teacup though. Isn't a teacup a special shape? Well, I mean it's a teacup if you put tea in it, right? What? She when she cup. doesn't know what's going on, she stands up to me every time. Alright, come here. Oh boy, she just sometimes hits me kind of hard, but that's okay. All right. So what's the plan, Chief? You no. got me standing right there. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this used to be the generator building, and there was uh, two generators in here, a 20 kW and a 10 kW. They were back in this other room, and actually these holes in the wall uh, were set up with panels. As you can see, they had uh, wooden panels in each hole and the gentleman could remove them uh, because the radiators were right here. And so when he would run the 20K, he would open that panel and close this one. And then when he ran the 10K, KW, he would open this one and shut that one. He had his day tanks for the generator in here, and that is what these fuel lines uh, were for. And he had a bulk tank back in there that he would transfer fuel to these two day tanks, preheat it, preheat the fuel in here, and then feed the generators. So. Anyway, they're long gone, but we're going to remove this copper and I may be able to reuse it. Actually, it's in pretty good shape. Do you have something to put some screws in besides your peacup? <laughs> I like this sign though. I want to keep this. We'll put this somewhere special. I don't know Is that your special file? I don't know if that's my special <laughs> file, but that's where it's going. Okay, this guy's. this stuff in this back room for right now. Can you open that door?
There you go. This shop just got a little bigger. So we grew up here in Alaska and back in the 60s and 70s, if you lived here then, this is the stove you had. This is a 100% 100% Alaskan barrel stove. So I grew up with this stove and uh, one like it actually. And Same. Love this stove and you can still see these around the state. The Park Service has a cabin up on the Yukon River uh, in the Charlie River Preserve up at Slavin, it's called Slavin's Lodge. It's up, in fact, my wife used to, her father was a, worked on the gold mine up there at Coal Creek and she used to live up there as a, as a young girl. Um, they have, they still have this style of stove in that old lodge. So if you go up there, visit the lodge at uh, Coal Creek. Roadhouse. Uh, Slavin's Roadhouse, yep, at Coal Creek. You will see this stove in action. And uh, yep, sure love this thing. They take, they take a chunk of wood as long as you can get into a 55-gallon drum. So, yeah, they, they can take a load of wood in their belly. I'm excited about this stove. I've had this for a number of years, just covered up and sitting out behind my house um, on a pallet. And I've always had a vision of installing it in a cabin here. So I, I'm excited to get this thing installed and see if it works. It'll work. <laughs> um, this is a six inch thin wall flue here and this stove pipe up here this thin wall is seven inch and this I believe is a slip joint it's it's meant to adjust up and down uh, to fit into top of the stove so we're gonna have to go from a seven inch down to a six inch through a reducer and it's kind of cobbled but it's what we have and I, I don't sure don't want to pull this stove pipe out right now and uh, redo it just for running this stove here for a few weeks. I should slip right over that, but they look like they're the, exactly oh, the same yeah. size. I will get it to submit. There we go. Look at that. Right there she Perfect. Is. Can you show us that? Can I show it to you? Yeah, absolutely. So this comes apart by, it's got kind of frozen by pushing this in, turning it. And in an ideal world, <laughs> there's a little piece of packing on here. There. And that pulls out. So what you need to do is install that up here. Somewhere in here. Standard. What's that? He's not the standard. <laughs> He's not? I thought he was. All right. Not enough water. Yeah, nine and a quarter. You always laugh when I get hurt. I wouldn't. I laugh, that was when not. When I laugh, <laughs> when you get hurt, you get all that. It's not the same. <laughs> it's exactly the same. I don't always laugh when you get hurt. That's a really unkind thing to say. <laughs> if you have a way, no, look at it's funny. No, no. 
Okay, I'm gonna just kind of get to it. Let's see. I can find a hole on the other side. You don't think it's going to work, do you? I think it will work. I know it works. I just think it's going to be harder than what you anticipated. <laughs> I know. Usually it does. But I know that gives you extra incentive. It does. <laughs> Try That's all I need really to hear from you. <laughs> you doubt me. Look at that. And let me see if it turns. That's, that's what that we're, really that's is what the really key. Is. I kind of like it to be a little sticky right there because I want to know that it's, that closed, it's closed. It's closed. But yeah, the stove pipe is a little elliptical. So, so what we got to do is that this collar is for the non crimped end. It's, it's for this non crimped end. Okay. Yeah. So this is not going to fit tight in here. It will fit up here. So basically what this, yeah, what needs to happen here is what we're going to have to do is, is to go ahead and snug that on. Snug that on. And, and I'm just need a chunk of that. Yeah, I need, I need to cut like a, I don't know, a six inch, a six inch uh, section here that we put down and then we'll just uh, slide that right down in. Cutting through that crimp here. There we go. So, huh? We'll do it. Okay. It's kind of bent out of shape back here, so it's not long bit. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Like that. Let's see it. Looks pretty good. I think the base could come from just a scratch. This one? I'll line it up with that door that jam. That might be too far, yeah. I'm not sure that door jam is vertical either. <laughs> Probably not. What are you doing? What? I said, what are you doing? Well, I found this bucket of old wood shingle, wood shingles over here, and look at this. I found some Kingsford uh, odorless charcoal lighter. You know, I could use paper and do it the old-fashioned way. Or, or I could just just use what what God has provided. <laughs> I think I'll use what was provided. So you know, I should probably save these shims for. Hanging doors and things. <laughs> what do you think? Excuse me, I'm going to say a couple. I'm starting to feel a little guilty about running through my shit. Here. That's what I was going to put See what else you could find here. Let's just let's start with a little fire and just see how everything works here. Right. I'm just gonna. Well, oh, it is cool. I found just about everything I needed right here. And some things I didn't need. <laughs> Far more things that we didn't need. Well, I thought maybe that would just come right off. But... The first fire in the old barrel still. Good. Let's see if it good. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna burn a little bit of the uh, we're gonna burn the finish off this new stove pipe. So you're gonna smell it stinking here. I am so glad. This is a had on the list for quite a while. And there's a lot of room. I can take a load of wood. Man, it's working beautifully. Working. 
I'm gonna go out and look at the uh, chimney and see if it's. Make sure uh, that it's not coming out. So why don't you make sure it's not coming out the gable end? So make sure it's coming out the. Hello. <laughs> Good girl. Well, we feel pretty good today because we accomplished our goal and got the, the old wood stove set up in here. And the temperature is already coming up. You, yeah. can, you can really feel it quickly. Um, so the rest of the day, we have uh, something a little different planned. We're gonna, it's about three o'clock? Yeah. Three o'clock in the afternoon. We're gonna jump, unload our snow machine here and uh, head up into the mountains about five miles from here. Uh, there's another cabin. Uh, and we've had that cabin for, I don't know, eight, nine years about now? eight years, yeah. And so we're going to snow machine up there and make some dinner and uh, warm that place up and then make some dinner. And we'll see you guys up there, so I think it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're super excited because this is our first time getting up there this whole winter. And that is not mm -hmm. typical for us. No. So. We're usually there many times during the winter, but um, this has just been a different sort of winter for us. And we've been working on the cabin in town and we've been working here and it's just not worked out for us to make the trip in. But we're going to go ahead and unload the snow machine and uh, do a little bit of recreating. Do a little bit of recreating. So we'll see you guys up there. Look at you! She's ready to go. <laughs> Stella, you go? can you get up? <laughs> She does want to. Do you want it between you and me? I don't care. Whatever's most comfortable for you. Uh, I kind of like her in front of me most of the time. <laughs> I can kind of hold on to her. Yeah, I, I, I took a tumble right off the roof. Well, this is awesome. Here's a shovel. Oh, it's been too long. It's come, like come coming on, home. Wow, I have missed this place. Yeah. It's 
It's like a time capsule. It is. Yeah, yeah looks like we had a visitor. <laughs> well, you know, somebody had to use the cabinet. <laughs> well, somebody definitely has. I yeah. don't think it might be a squirrel. It, well, it's some kind of animal. Squirrel or an ermine. Yeah. You know, that's interesting because we have in all these years never had a single... A single mouse or anything. Not a single thing in here. So but... Somebody found a hole and chewed away, <laughs> chewed away in. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to see up here. I feel a little bit like the three bears and I'm going to come up here and find fat Goldilocks tucked into one of our beds. <laughs> ah. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty much, you know, <laughs> this pretty one. much slept in our beds. Hey, you know, don't limit yourself to one, though. Sleep in all of them. <laughs> Make sure we have to wash all the bedding. Oh, my word. Oh, my gosh. If you want to get that the can good. opener and open this. What is this? What type of soup? It's going to be a salmon, but we are out of our home canned salmon. So, so we're using we're using, we're using a still wild cat caught, but it's store bought. Right. Do you uh, where's where's the can opener? Stella's not picky. She'll have either wild caught. She can have that chunk of store. She'll have either store bought or fresh caught. Yeah. We're about two months away from uh, salmon fishing season here, and we are going to go catch some salmon. There is nothing like Copper River Reds. That's the truth. That is the truth. I'm just going to pour that in there, juice and all. It's cold. Yeah. It hasn't been warmed Every, up all winter. <laughs> everything hasn't warmed up in here yet. Tanya, this looks amazing. So Watch good. for the bay leaf there. I'll give you one. Is that okay? No, yeah. I'll just. Oh, that's plenty. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. Well, we looked out the window a few minutes ago and uh, there was a squirrel. <laughs> looking in, looking in the window like he was surprised. Like it was time for him to come to his dwelling. Like he was surprised to see us, <laughs> to see us back here again. And uh, we don't have many squirrels around here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no trees. So uh, this squirrel's been living in our woodshed there for several years. Good evening, everyone. It is awesome to be here. Um, we're we love this place and as as we mentioned we haven't had the opportunity to come here very often this winter or at all this is actually the first time this winter and and that is not typical usually we spend a lot of time here so anyway we did get a little surprise when we got here and after uh <laughs> cleaning up about i don't know ten thousand squirrel nuggets maybe roughly yeah i would say at least yeah that we're I, I'm not exaggerating when I say they were on every flat surface of this cabin. Um, so that was fun and, and quite an adventure and completely unexpected. And you know, I was feeling all emotional, really emotional about being here. We have so many, so many really special family <laughs> memories here. And I, I was actually, I was feeling a little choked up when we got here. And then we spent like an hour and a half cleaning squirrel nuggets, and then I was just angry. So, you know, it's been a roller coaster of emotions today. <laughs> but it's good to be here, and it's good to to say hello to all of you. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have the heart to uh, try to 
get rid of that little squirrel last year. Uh, he was around here and uh, I saw him in the shed. He was storing up some mushrooms uh, for the winter. He had a whole pile of dried mushrooms in the shed. We thought it was so cute. I actually <laughs> took the mushrooms out because I had to stock wood in the shed and then I put all the mushrooms back in the shed for him for this winter. Well, <laughs> he found a hole and got in here and he just partied. And has been having a hail time all winter. All winter he's been partying. All winter he's partying. been living the high life in here and, and had the gall to come up and climb across the outside of the cabin right up to the window tonight while we were sitting in here. And we're like, yeah. dude, <laughs> you, you're pushing us. You're pushing. Yeah, Keep he's pushing. been running around all the windows tonight <laughs> trying to get back in. So, uh, yeah. yeah, we blocked his holes up though. So they're, they're closed. So. <laughs> we should have done that a long time ago. Let this be a lesson. Yep. We wanted to respond to some of these comments uh, that we received today. We spent several hours today uh, sitting here answering comments, and we just—it's the highlight of our uh, the highlight of our weekend. We, we we love it. We love it so much. And can I just say we are so just humbled and appreciative of the support and the kindness. It it is truly truly overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So some of the comments, and again, there's there's hundreds, oh, and uh, we did, and they're all so good. So we we pick uh, we picked a half a dozen or so tonight that just uh, stood out to us or made us laugh, and we wanted to just respond to them. Um, so I want to start with uh, Peggy Padovano. Uh, she mentioned that uh, she and her husband Rob went out to dinner and uh, couldn't wait to get home and watch uh, our show. Uh, they said they loved it and uh, they were hooked on it. <laughs> and I got a chuckle because Peggy said that her husband Rob has been inspired to do all of uh, his projects around the house since uh, he's been watching our show. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you, Rob, to get your, tool, get your tools together, get that tool belt on, and I'm glad we can be of an inspiration Peggy, to you. Peggy, you're welcome. <laughs> and Peggy, you're welcome. <laughs> I want to say happy anniversary to Tony T and his wife. Next Thursday, they are celebrating 56 years of marriage. Oh, wow. So, whoop, whoop. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Hello to Zednik Leopold. Uh, I like your comment, Zednik, because you just seem to love Alaska so much and when you started talking about Jack London and how uh, he inspired you as a young man uh, it really took me back because I have just loved Jack London's uh, writings uh, as a boy. Um, his short story to build a fire uh, just is stuck with me for so many years. In fact my uh, son, he's 17 and a half, uh, was reading it yesterday as part of his uh, one of his school English assignments. He was reading uh, Jack London's To Build a Fire, and it just we sat and talked about it for a while. So I, I really liked your uh, writing and especially talking about your cabin that you're building. Um, and I just uh, it, you inspired me as well. So thank you. I would like to say hello to Richard and Helen Milney from Down Under. Thank you so much for your kindness and your encouraging encouraging comments just about every week. Um, Richard has been a longtime follower of the channel uh, way back when Gil was, was doing the sauna build. He mentioned when um, watching mm -hmm. when Drox was helping. So he's been, you've been around a while and we appreciate you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for always just encouraging and mm -hmm. being so kind. Um, and Stella says, Stella says hugs. <laughs> and Richard, the sauna build, of course, was at this property, and the sauna is just right outside. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to kind of orient you uh, with where we are. So thank you very much. We, we loved what you said. Asia Kasai, I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, you are a dear and kind person, and you have been uh, following for a long time now, mm -hmm. and you always say the kindest things, and I especially like uh, some of the things you said this week. 
Um, and you wrapped it up by saying, I swear to God, if I ever move to Canada, I will come to Alaska and visit you guys. And I just thank you for that. Maybe one day we can share a cup of coffee around a campfire together and uh, just catch up. So appreciate it. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to wrap it up tonight by saying hello to Randy uh, in Arizona, Coyote Sticks. And Randy, you are a special friend of mine. I have enjoyed having conversations with you all year. Um, you're so faithful. And I just love reading the things you write. Mm -hmm. uh, you're an excellent writer. And um, I just want to say thank you. You're, I, I, I never miss a comment that you write. I read them all. Uh, they stick with me. And uh, I just want you to know I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And one of these days, I'm going to get one <laughs> of your coyote sticks. So, and yeah. it's going to be on my channel. So <laughs> you just get one ready for me. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Good night.